Hey guys, welcome back. After, what, a couple weeks now? Almost three weeks, probably. And this is part two of my GameStop rant. Um, now, part one did cover used games, and part two will cover the employees. And let me tell you, the employees are almost as bad as the actual corporation itself. And people, you are going to be stunned. Now... There's this website called uh, GameStopSucks.blogspot.com. The link will be in the description. All right. Now, horror stories of the GameStop company and horror, you know, horror stories of GameStop and horror stories of the company as a whole. All right. So uh, go read them. Pretty funny. Um. Yeah, I read them every day. I'm not joking I'm not exaggerating it either they're hilarious um now as for my experiences with this GameStop employees uh I actually haven't exactly had the best but I haven't had the worst either there's a couple of pretty cool guys there All right Toby's a pretty cool guy um he breaks the rules pretty much so I can get away with a lot of shit, shit in that store if I go to that one um, I usually get the employee discount on, like, everything whenever I go there. If he's working there, then. But this one bitch, I will never forget her. She was the biggest asshole. She was... She... This sec, no plates available, don't care. Um, she would talk on her phone during hours... Leave the store and go to little concession stands outside of the mall. Go get pretzels. Go get f fucking food. Go get carryouts at Coney Island across the corner. And she would just leave the store whenever she wanted. Because, she, and she couldn't get in trouble for this either, right? Because she was the only black person working there at the time. And she was the only woman working there at the time, right? So she had two cards to pull. The race card or the gender card. So obviously they couldn't fire her, or else they would pull the, or else she would pull the race card or the gender card, and you know she'd get off scot fucking free. So, um, so ultimately everyone hated her. She was the biggest bitch. All right, and this is how she eventually came to her demise. She would. Well, first first thing you gotta know is this, alright? When a store sells something, anything, there's gonna be two receipts. The store copy and the customer copy, alright? She would take the customer copy and she would do a fake return on used games, alright? Yeah. She would take a game that costs $50, $25, fucking $5. She ret would return every game she sold. Every game she sold under someone else's name, right? She, so she put in generic white names like John Doe and John Smith and addresses like fucking 123 Sesame Street or 599 Boulevard Road or whatever. Like, like, I shit you not, she actually did this and she got away with it for about a week and she gets got all this money on, back on top of what she made hourly. I and and my buddy Toby that works there, she did it under his account too. He almost got fired, but that is until she got caught doing it on camera. Actually, when they got when the managers finally decided to get off their lazy asses and actually check the cameras. Um, legend has it they do that once in a while. So. Yeah, just sec here. So, Sonia, you are a bitch. Well, that's one bad employee, but it doesn't stop there. The main problem is these managers, because these managers can do whatever the fuck they want. Now, until the midnight release for a game, um, the store is locked up until the clock strikes, tw strikes 12. Now, during the midnight release for Brawl, I went to a GameStop, not the usual one but that I usually go to, but a different one. 
and we were freezing our asses off because I was up there for for the tournament early for the tournament well well I was, I was supposed to get in early for the tournament but obviously I didn't get in uh, oh I I think it's actually you're supposed to get in an earlier tournament but those fucking bastards didn't let us in so we're freezing our asses off in the middle of February all the way up here in Wisconsin all right waiting for the game to come out yet the managers and all their friends were locked up all toasty and warm in the store playing the games before their release doing fucking unboxing and shit so before the release date so obviously they broke the law right there because I found out that if you open or sell a game before the release that's Fine of 125,000, yeah, huh, or 250,000 dollars per game. So that must have at least been a at least a few million dollars right there that they could have got fined. But of course they didn't because they work at GameStop and they can can get away with murder. Now, uh, it's mostly managers, though. It's not the regular floor employees, though, because they don't get paid shit. They're underpaid, and most of them are just college kids or high school kids or whatnot. So the managers can mostly get away with any, with whatever they fucking want, all right? <laughs> just a sec here. Do, do, do. All right. Now these games up. Now these games up employees has a major influence on what you purchase and its availability. All right. GameStop employees are allowed to rent basically any game of their choosing for the four days. All right. Have you ever realized that how GameStop games are gutted? You'll give them a display case and, and they'll throw the game in there, which they should just give you a brand new copy shrink wrap, but. The reason why they don't do that is because they can rent any game for up to four days, then return it so they open up all the new copies. So if you want to go pick up uh, up that a game that you ordered, nope, sorry, can't do that. GameStop employees currently renting it, which they shouldn't be allowed to do in the first place. Now, they can do it as free of charge, right? They can do it any fucking game. They can also shrink wrap games after they're opened. I shit you not, because this has happened to me. Alright, the games are already open, then they shrink wrap them again. And you can tell it, because it's shitty too, alright? It looks like some fucking monkey saran wrapped it. Okay. Um. Okay, it looks like shit. So, GameStop employees can also do that too. So, you want to buy a game? Sorry, it's... Being rented right now by a GameStop employee. <sighs> Fuck balls. So going back to what I said in the first video about used games, GameStop has a lot of leeway on how much money you get for trading a game. Now, there's this thing called reefer fees. Ever heard of them? You probably have not. Reefer fees are if a game is too scratched or too damaged, they take the, they take them anyway, all right, but they charge you a reefer fee so it takes away from the store from your store credit. All right, that supposedly covers the shipping costs to get it shipped. And I don't know who the fuck does these, but they look like shit. They look worse than when they come in, okay? Now, a friend of mine recently had a backpack full of games to take over there because he just cleaned out his inventory and he didn't need them, but they charged him a few dollars that took away from other games he traded in because he ordered them a reefer fee that was worth more than the fucking game, and unfortunately he didn't look at the receipt when they... When he was there, GameStop, GameStop, they'll f feel the game, and if it feels bad, they'll charge you a reefer fee. If there's a fingerprint on it, they'll 
do that. My GameStop is so fucking picky about that. That's another reason I don't trade in games because they're super picky about it. Other than the fact that they get I get shit deals, they're picky about it. So they got a lot of leeway in how much you get for a game, and it's up to their judgment, people. And I'm sure you don't know about that either because they don't tell you it. You gotta look for it on your receipt. Alright. Also, GameStop employees are extraordinarily careless with what they do. Going back to how I told you about those drawers with the CD cases over the games. Yeah, this is what they do when they try to put the game in the case. They toss it up in the air like a goddamn frisbee and try to catch it in the case. I swear to God, that's what they do. Like, they look like they're fucking drunk when they try to put the game in the case. I... I swear to God, when I went through my COD 2 and the fucking idiot... I mean... The uh, fucking idiot forgot to put the game in the case. Yeah. Now, um, I mean, I took... I mean, I went, went to the car with the case. I took the bag out, and I didn't hear the... Uh, you know, see rumble thing? This thing. Um, we move around the case. I opened it up and the game wasn't in there. And when I went back inside, I said, Uh, um, sir, you forgot the game. And lo and be fucking hold, he said, No, I put it in there. I know I did. And I said, Look to your left, you fucking retard. And what do you know? There it was. And then when he go to put the game in the case, he fucking slipped and scratches the CD on the, uh, little spindle thing. Holds the CD into the case. <coughs> so obviously GameStop employees do not care about the, what they do. They, they just slap a game in there and send it out to you. It's ridiculous. And these fucking GameStop employees don't give a shit. And maybe they wouldn't charge you so many reefer fees if they knew how to put a game... If they knew how to put a game in a fucking case. So as for GameStop employees, they employ some of the worst people imaginable all right occasionally you might get a few good people but mostly it's just a bunch of rot rotten eggs um so thanks for watching this and tune in for part three where i wrap this up when i talk about the corporation itself uh, god help us all